What's up everybody, it's PJ the Great and today I am going to show you my tips and tricks on how to vlog with cameras that don't have flip out screens. Lego. Thank you for joining me for today's video. If you're new here, you might want to consider subscribing. I do, well, I'm going to try and do a lot of tips and tricks on what I use when I'm filming stuff for my channel and photography tips too. I am a noob, but I'm here to share what I learned along the way. And today I'm going to talk about how to vlog with cameras that do not have flip out screens. Now, a lot of vloggers, they like the convenience of having like a point and shoot that has a screen that they can either rotate up or rotate out so they can see if they're in frame and uh, make sure that they're in focus and things of that nature. And uh, some vloggers prefer, well, prefer to use a DSLR like this one here um, and they want one that has like a flip out screen. Well, I have a DSLR here and I have a point shoot here that I use on a day-to-day -day basis and neither one of these have flip out screens. So you're probably thinking that it's kind of hard to be able to vlog on these type of cameras where you can't really see if you're in frame. So I'm going to show you the tricks that I use so that I'm able to use these two guys when I'm out and about doing a vlog. Now, the first tip is you want to, depending on what kind of camera you have, you want to make sure that your autofocus is on. So that way you'll know that no matter what you're shooting and when you're shooting, everything is going to be in, in focus. And that's going to be important because you can't see on the screen if you're in focus or not. So depending on what kind of camera you have, um, I have like my DSLR, this is the Nikon D 3300. And this is like uh, my primary vlogger here. This is the Sony Cybershot. Um, why does like, why does Sony have like these long, difficult names for their cameras? I don't remember the, the name of this camera, but I'm pretty sure that editing PJ is going to help me out by putting something like right down here, maybe with the name of it. I got you fam. Good looking out, PJ the Great, the editor. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do depending on the camera that you have, like for example, right here with my little Sony guy, uh, there is a mode that you can go into and you can select your auto focus settings. Now this particular camera right here, it gives you auto focus like on yourself, like if you're the subject, face detection, um, and it gives you like if you want to like focus on a certain object and it also has an option in here for like if you're filming yourself and a kid it'll give the primary focus to the kid me I just put this on auto focus on myself so then that way I know that when I'm holding it out I'm in focus now with the Nikon D3300 there's multiple auto focusing options in here i tend to use the one that covers like this whole area i don't really use the face detection the only reason why is because i'm not really a fan of having myself in focus and then everything in the background like kind of blurry i'd rather just have like the whole center of what i'm filming and focus so that way i'm in focus and some of the things that are behind me are in focus and then if there's a little things like out of focus on the left or the right hand side I'm not gonna mind that that much okay the second tip on vlogging with cameras that don't have flip out screens is the way that you're actually holding the camera while you're vlogging now two examples I'll give you let's go with the point and shoot right here the rule of thumb that I use is I make sure that I am holding the camera out at arm's length so then that way you're not real like up close <laughs> to the people that are like watching you. You're got a fair amount of distance. And then when you're holding it far out as well, you're going to get more of the things around you into the shot because you don't want to just be the primary focus of the shot. You want it to be you. And then you want people to see where you are. So 
holding it out at arm's length is usually what I do. Uh, with the point and shoot, you're just doing that pretty much with your hand. Um, if you're using um, a tripod, like how I have my DSLR set up, still same thing, arm's length, hanging out right here. That way you're making sure that you're getting yourself not too close and then you're getting the area that's behind you. Now, the other tip is, it may seem like a no-brainer, it seems like it to me, but um, what you want to do is you wanna make sure that you have that lens pointed directly center of your face. So arm's length, and then you wanna make sure that that lens is pointing directly at your nose. And then that way you know you got the camera centered, you're in the center, you're the primary focus, and then you're still getting the stuff that's behind you. So arm's length, point that lens right at your nose, and then everything should be fine. You'll be in the shot perfectly with enough background around you. Same thing with the DSLR center right with your nose. You're in the shot, everything behind you is in the shot. Now you're probably saying to yourself, well, PJ the Great, what happens when I have friends around? Very good question. If you have another friend that's in the shot with you and it's two of you, my rule of thumb is to point that camera right in between the both of you. So in between your face and your friend's face, then that way you guys are in the shot. Same thing with the DSLR, right in between the both of your faces. And then you should be fine in that situation like that. Now, if you can, if you can afford to, a lot of times people will pick up DSLRs and they'll pick them up in kit form and they come up with these kit lenses. This is a 15 to 55 on my Nikon D3300. Um, it works just fine. You just wanna make sure that when you're filming on this thing that you are at 55. So then that way you're not all up close <laughs> where you're vlogging. Um, you got a fair amount of distance from yourself and the camera. But if you can help it, another thing that'll help you out is you can pick yourself up one of these. This is a wide angle lens attachment. So I'm guessing like if you're picking up a DSLR kit, you're just starting out, you don't really have a lot of money to shell out on multiple lenses. These things will cost you like maybe 20 bucks and you'll be able to just attach this here. I'll show you on the front of your DSLR. There you go, like that. So now your kit lens has a wide angle lens and now you'll be getting even more things that are behind you in the shot while you're centered. That's like an extra 20 bucks. You don't need it, but it helps out if you want to really make sure that you have a lot of things that are behind you in your shot. Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that. Those are my uh, little quick tips that I use when I'm vlogging on cameras that don't have a flip out screen. Little disclaimer, I actually do have a point and shoot that has a flip up screen and I do have a DSLR that has a flip out screen, but these are still like my primary go-to cameras when I'm vlogging. I rarely vlog on my DSLR, but when I do, I use those techniques. And this is like my primary go-to vlogging camera, no flip out screen, and it works out just fine. You guys might have seen some of my past videos, like all the docu-vlogs that I've shot this year, the footage that I'm shooting when I'm vlogging with the camera in front of myself, it's all done with this camera, no flip out screen. And the more you do it, the more comfortable you get with it. When you have a camera out like this, you pretty much see when you go back to the editing process, okay, I was clearly in the shot, there was a lot of stuff around me, then you get more comfortable, you know, vlogging like this and knowing that you're in the shot or vlogging like this, knowing that you're in the shot, even with people in the shot, because you get more comfortable with knowing what your camera is capable of and you know exactly where to put that camera to make sure everything is in the shot. So the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. Don't let anybody tell you that you need a flip out screen to get started on vlogging. You can totally do it with point shoots, DSLRs that don't have flip out screens. You'll still be able to get it done. Hey, for the longest time, Peter McKinnon was vlogging on his DSLR and it didn't have a flip out screen and he was doing just fine. I'm doing just fine too and I'm gonna continue to keep on keeping on. If you found this video useful, please do me a favor and give it a big old thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to this channel already, 
go ahead and do so. You can click that button right down below. Subscribe, join the family. We have a lot of fun around here. I got more tips and tricks coming along the way, more docu-vlogs, and I just wanna say this. We are just one month into 2018, and I have already been like extremely happy with how things are going with this channel. My past docu-vlogs and even a regular vlog has been getting more views than any of my um, vlogs from 2017. So it makes me feel like I am in going in the right direction. So I'm happy about that and I thank you guys for that. And I started off the new year with 66 subscribers. Now I have 71. So in one month, hey, a lot of people might not consider that huge. I consider it huge and I'm very appreciative. So to all you guys that have subscribed within the last month and all the subscribers that decided to stick around with me, thank you so much. Tell your friends about me and sign up as well. Don't forget to hit that little bell so you'll be notified when I'm uploading new videos. And until I talk to you guys the next time when I'm shooting a docu-vlog or maybe just a regular vlog or just want to simply come and hang out, this is PJ the Great saying Audi 5000G.